to Making Sense of Money, a podcast dedicated to making financial topics easier to understand and more accessible to everyone. I'm Andrew Pellegrini, one of your co-hosts. And I'm Jake Hamilton. Last episode, we talked about inflation and what it means for you. Uh, It's definitely a salient topic right now. So if you want to learn some of the basics, go check it out. And I'm Nikki Giancola Shanks. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that affects everyone in some form or another, um, financial security and stress. As Nikki mentioned, financial stress weighs heavily on many consumers. I'm sure we've all felt stress at one point or another in our lives, financial or otherwise, um, or our day, maybe depending on when you're listening to this podcast. Since we're nerds, Uh, and we like to give some context to the financial topics that we cover, let's talk about some of the statistics related to financial stress. Um, So in April 2021, the FINRA Investor Education Foundation and the Global Financial Literacy Center released a study showing that even before the pandemic, the majority of Americans ages 21 to 62 experienced some form of financial stress and anxiety. So that data was collected using the 2018 National Financial Capability Study, along with some focus groups that they did in December of 2020. So it has a mix of data from pre-pandemic and then in the pandemic. Um, So some highlights of their research include 60% of Americans indicated feeling anxious when thinking about personal finances. If you've been a financial educator for any amount of time, this is pretty common. This makes sense. Uh, 50% felt stressed when talking about their finances. Women reported feeling more anxious about personal finances than men, somewhere in the 65% to 54% range. Um, And then the most financially anxious people were women, young adults, people with financially dependent children, those who are low income, unmarried, and unemployed. And then medical expenses were a big burden for the people in this survey. People with high financial anxiety were more likely to have past due medical bills, which makes sense. And medical expenses in general were also mentioned as a factor to high anxiety. According to this report, there was a correlation between high levels of financial stress and low levels of financial literacy or knowledge, problematic financial behaviors, and decreased financial security. And we'll talk more about that as well. Um, Again, I wanna stress that the vast majority of this data from this report was from the 2018 National Financial Capability Study, which is a nationally representative study. It had almost 28,000 observations or people that participated. So that's a huge sample, but it's a few years old now. Um, So it is pre-pandemic data and the focus groups were completed online in December, 2020, which is around the same time as when we got that second round of stimulus checks announced to go out before January 15th, 2021. So that could have also biased some of the focus group conversations too. So that's important to remember. Yeah, that's good to point out. And we know that COVID-19 has definitely wreaked havoc all over the world. Uh, The impact that it's had and continues to have on the economy and personal finances is still being studied. The financial stress that COVID-19 has caused or exacerbated and continues to cause or exacerbate will be studied for years. Uh, Researchers are collecting data in real time on these topics. So as we discuss some of these statistics, please know that they're shifting all the time. They're definitely constantly changing right now. So there are many reasons for financial stress, um, depending on your socioeconomic status or access to financial or community resources or even your social capital those factors can all influence your personal financial stress. And that can be either more or less in your control. For the most vulnerable population, some of which were mentioned in the data about the report that we're talking about, consumers experiencing extreme financial fragility or basic needs insecurity, um, 
that anxiety, depression, and stress caused by finances can be really crippling. And one thing I just want to uh, highlight that Andrea talked about in her wealth of statistics is that um, there is that correlation between high levels of financial stress and low levels of financial literacy. So, and that's kind of our whole purpose with this podcast is to help increase that um, financial knowledge to help people. So thank you for listening. (laughs) But uh, I'm going to focus a little bit more now on the financial security aspect of what's been linked to high levels of financial stress. So the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities tracks certain impacts of COVID on finances, including difficulty getting enough food, inability to pay rent or mortgage, and difficulty covering household expenses using sources like the Census's Household Pulse Survey. So I'm going to highlight some of these statistics that are from October 11th, 2021. And these figures show that while things are improving, there are still many, many people suffering financial hardships. And you will see that in addition to people struggling, households of color are statistically more likely to be affected. So 9% of adults reported that their household sometimes or often didn't have enough to eat during the survey period. The survey period was the week before October 11th. In multiracial households, that number jumps to 19%, with Black households at 17% and Latino households at 16%. In Illinois, like all of Illinois that they surveyed, the percentage was 8%, right around the total of percent of adults. Then one in six adults, or 16%, are not caught up on rent during the pandemic. Black households are at 28%, Asian households at 20, and Latino at 18. In Illinois, as a whole, 17%. And over one in four adults, or 29%, had trouble paying for household items. But again, in households of color, this number increases significantly. Black households is at 44%, multiracial or other at 42%, Latino at 38%, and then Illinois as a whole at 26%. Yeah, Nikki, and financial security is a big part of this. Uh, When people don't have access to basic needs like food and housing, it naturally increases their financial stress. Um, Like we said earlier, the impact of COVID on financial stress will be studied for many years to come. The American Psychological Association found from their Stress in America survey that 61% of Americans reported feeling stressed about money in their 2021 study, which is slightly less than the 2020 study, but actually slightly more than the 2019 study. So the impact of financial stress actually has both mental and physical side effects. I feel like a lot of people, when they hear the word stress, they think um, of a mental type of you know, feeling, but stress can also cause actual physical side effects as well. So let's start with the mental side effects. Some of the mental side effects include depression, anxiety, difficult falling asleep and staying asleep and insomnia. Some of the physical side effects of financial stress can be inflammation, heart and lung disease, arthritis, diabetes, asthma, and headaches. So some pretty serious side effects. And then children also feel the effects of financial stress. They may not know what it is, but they're in that environment and they can still feel that. So some of their signs could be acting out and changes in their sleep or appetite. So it's important to recognize these symptoms and seek treatment if you are experiencing any. Um, you know, again, as always our disclaimer, we are not lawyers, nor are we doctors. <laughs> so, um, just, just wanted to highlight that, that if you are experiencing anything uh, that I just described to check in with your doctor, you know, a therapist, um, there's no shame in any of that. 
um, regardless of where stress is coming from, be it financial or another area of stress, seeking help is a really good idea. And I know that seems kind of ironic since we just talked about the data related to financial stress being stress about medical bills, but there are community resources that may be able to help you as well, or even relying on your support system, your personal support system to just talk through stress. Obviously, self-care is really important. So just thinking about those things to combat stress can be really helpful. Unfortunately, there's not like a silver bullet or a magic potion that will just make all the stress go away, regardless of if it's financial or another type of stress. But there are strategies that can help, particularly if your stress is influenced by something like the, a lack of financial knowledge, right? Or some unhealthy financial habits, which we talked about earlier. So both of those things can be a lot more easily changed than your financial security, regardless of your socioeconomic status, whether or not you are low income or high income, you experience financial stress, the two things that you can impact on your own is your level of knowledge and your habits. Habits are harder to change than knowledge. But so the APA or the American Psychological Association that did the Stress in America survey has some tips on how to deal with financial stress explicitly. Um, for instance, they suggest make one financial decision at a time, spacing out financial decisions instead of trying to make many at one time can really help you feel less overwhelmed. And um, being part of financial education for so long, this makes a lot of sense if you know about decision fatigue, uh, which is basically when you get tired of making decisions, so you start defaulting to decisions that may not be the best because it's easier for your brain for cognition. Um, the more stressful decisions that you make throughout your day, the more likely you are to make poor decisions as it gets later in the day. Uh, so this is particularly true for people with lower income since they tend to have a lot of high financial fragility and suffer from basic needs insecurity. So every single decision can be high stress, high impact for them. Another tip that the APA had was tracking your spending. So research so shows that seeing how you spend your money can be an effective tool to make more informed decisions or help you change behaviors, motivate you to change behaviors. Um, another tip is to identify your financial stressors and make a plan for how to deal with them. So what part of your money situation is causing you the most stress? Where can you reduce your spending or increase your knowledge or increase your saving? Maybe it's not just cutting expenses, but maybe diversifying your income. Recognize how you deal with stress related to money. So people are more likely to turn to unhealthy habits like smoking or drinking or um, emotional eating or gambling if they're stressed, especially during hard financial times. So be on the lookout for those behaviors and don't be afraid to seek help when necessary. Like Nikki was talking about earlier, reach out to a professional that can help you with those things. Um, it's important to try to avoid temptation. Uh, you can limit your time shopping, both in person and online, which I know is harder and harder to do, but it is a good option. Uh, and then think of different activities to fill your time instead that won't cost you money. Using lists can be a really helpful uh, practice here for everything from groceries to holiday shopping to limit your time actually shopping. Um, and it's also important to remember what your priorities are, what's important to you, especially during the holiday season. It's kind of easy to get lost in commercialism and the foam, fear of missing out on a deal, a holiday deal. I succumb to that sometimes myself. Uh, so it's here you might concentrate more on the people around you that you care about, your pets, your kids, or other things in your life that bring you joy. And I just wanted to chime in about the decision fatigue that you were talking about. I always tell people like, 
people are like, oh, I, I don't do that as much with my finances as other things. But think about like just in your day at work, right? Like there's a reason why a lot of people like try to get their bigger projects done first before their smaller ones, because as the day goes on, they're like, my brain cannot handle this anymore. <laughs> so um, well, I, mean, I told Jake and, and Andrea this yesterday when, when I was reviewing stuff for the podcast, I, I was like, I, for some reason, my, my brain is like not functioning today. So it's important to recognize that that also happens with financial decisions as well. You're like, fine, whatever. I'll just, I'll just pay the extra, even though you, you may not need to do that. I feel like particularly for me personally online, if I'm like trying to get a whole bunch of stuff done, I'm like, fine, whatever. I'll just pay this extra shipping. And it's like, eh, if I just waited, I probably wouldn't need to pay that extra shipping. I could probably find the same thing somewhere else. <laughs> well, and decision fatigue is cumulative. It's not compartmentalized based on the type of stress it induces. So it's not just related to financial decisions. If you have any type of stressful decision throughout your day, it could be related completely to work. And then you go grocery shopping after work and you've had a long day of making stressful decisions. You might not make the best choices when you get to the grocery store because you're out of the cognitive energy to make good choices. Yeah, that's when I get too much ice cream. Yeah. Yeah, it. I mean, that stuff can build and it can it can catch up to you. I think, uh, Andrew, you made a really good point with like the list I know or something that like I kind of rely on and that helps me because if you get me in a grocery store without a list, it's bad news for my checking account. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it just helps you to like, you know, focus your focus, your task and focus your spending. Um, so lists are something that I use to like really help me. And yeah, I think, I think probably most people can relate to like, at the end of the day, you've had a long, stressful day of work and you know, you should probably just go home and cook dinner. And like, that might be the more financial form, more financially sound decision, but you're like, ah, oh, you know what? I can just pick something up instead. It'll just be easier. It's one less thing to worry about. Um, yeah, that's something I do a lot to be honest, but yeah, While there's we're a on that. Let's just talk about the reality of food budgets. Let's just talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Food budgets can, can be all over the place. Uh, yeah. And I think they do cause financial stress because it's kind of hard to stick to, you know, you might have like a, a plan for grocery shopping and like a meal kit or cooking this many meals a week, but it's like really easy, easy to deviate from that plan. And that can throw a wrench in your budget pretty quickly. It's also think, a very social thing that there's usually, I mean, no granted guys, I mean, like, I understand we're still in the middle of the pandemic. I'm not saying let's go out and whatever, but, <laughs> but in normal times, <laughs> um, you know, most of what you end up doing revolves around some sort of food or drink location and you end up spending money there. And so in though, and that could cause stress, especially if you are in a tight financial situation and you're like, but I, I do want to go see my friends and they're, you know, going out to dinner. It's, it's one of those things where you may have to plan ahead a little bit and look at the menu and see like, okay, if I go, this is what I'm ordering that's it. You know, like go with the mindset. So that way you're not all of a sudden a hundred dollars later, like, oh man, I just got like lost in the, you know, <laughs> I just kept spending it and forgetting. Like it's good to, to kind of pre think through those things in, in especially social situations. Cause I personally, I feel like it's so easy to be like, oh yeah, like whatever in, in the moment that if, but if I, plan ahead it usually helps with that well and the reason why I said we should talk about food budgets is because <laughs> Nikki Jake and I were having a conversation before we started this podcast about food budgets and shame related to food budgets because like personally I have for a long time I had a hard time accepting how much money I spent on food, regardless of if it was in a social situation or on groceries. Cause I was like, I can do better than this. I can spend less than this. And the reality was I wasn't compromising 
paying rent or, you know, my cell phone bill or my tuition. So I needed to get to a point where I accepted that that's what I was paying, make that part of my budget. And that helped reduce my stress because I just accepted the reality of what it is. If you, if you get to a point where you realize you cannot change your behavior and it's not impacting something else in your life, accepting that as reality can help you reduce stress. Yeah. And I think too, it's important for me personally, I am, my friends like to tell me I'm an extroverted extrovert. So I, I strive on that. And, and that's it. What brings me happiness and reduces my stress is spending time with people and going out and doing that. So for me personally, to lower my stress may mean I'm spending a little bit more on those type of social gatherings than maybe somebody else is. But it's all about that that balance. You have to, I'm not going to put myself into debt over that, but it's about finding that balance within your budget. Yeah, I mean, certainly like, I'm not trying to, uh, yeah, I don't want to say like you should never eat out or like spend your money on like social events with friends or anything like that. But yeah, it's just something I know, like I personally too, like when I look at how much I spend on like food or um, like food and beverage, if I was looking at that category in my budget, like I think like, uh, like Andrea said, like, I'm like, man, I could, I could reduce this here, but like, you know, what, it, what, what, what would I be giving up to, to reduce that? You know, am I giving up some kind of like, social events that reduce stress and stress for me in other ways. Um, so yeah, that's, that's certainly important to think about, you know, we're talking about budgets and creating a budget can also be a huge help when you're dealing with financial stress. Um, actually one of our earlier podcast episodes, episode 20 of this podcast talks about how many different, um, budgeting strategies there are, which of which there are many. Um, so please, if, if, if you want to start a budget or want to maybe refine your budget, um, go back and check out that episode. It was episode 20. Uh, in addition, our Get Savvy webinar series also has a free webinar that you can access with even more budgeting tips. And that one's called Budget, budget Hacks. Uh, Andrea and I also just co-hosted a webinar on conscious consumerism, which talks about how to use mindfulness to reduce financial stress and overcome money shame. Um, you can look for all these links. We're going to post all of this in the show notes. So if there's like anything on budgeting or conscious consumerism or mindfulness that you're interested in learning more about, we'll definitely have that in the show notes for you to check out. And again, um, just to stress above all, do not be afraid to ask for help. So this may include seeking out therapists or counselors. If you're feeling overwhelmed, depressed, or anxious, it could mean checking out some of the array of government assistance programs on both the state and federal level that can help with things like the cost of food and housing. So I'm going to highlight a few of those resources now um, or where you can go to find even more resources. Um, but again, just know this is definitely not a, a whole comprehensive list, but where you could kind of get started. So first, you can call 211 for local resources or visit 211.org to find out what is in your own community so closest to you. Um, in Illinois, you can visit www.illinoishousinghelp.org to learn more about options available to you regarding rental and mortgage assistance, including access to free legal aid to help with evictions. You can also apply for SNAP food benefits, and there are still some emergency COVID-19 programs running. So please check out the Illinois Department of Human Services link in the show notes for more information. It was a very long link, so if I don't wanna repeat it here for you, just go check it out. Um, and also we kind of mentioned this before, but help includes self-care. So make sure you are taking time for you and what your you time needs to be. It could be a bubble bath, alone time, dinner with friends, a snuggle with your pet, whatever you need, make sure that you are taking that time um, to help reduce your financial stress. And along with self-care and have it, its impact on financial stress, sometimes self-care is setting boundaries. And so that means, you know, 
maybe saying no when your friend asks for a loan, right? And it's hard to do sometimes, or it's, uh, especially right now, communicating what the budget is for gift exchanges, right? So that can help reduce stress as well, some communication about your boundaries and what you can do and what you can't do. So we hope by listening to this podcast, you realize that you are not alone in dealing with financial stress. It is unfortunately a very common problem. Don't forget to check out the show notes for resources that can help. And when Jake talked about the budget hacks um, resource, for instance, and the budgeting podcast that we have, we have a whole bunch of things to think about when it comes to choosing tools to help you manage your money in those resources that that go into a greater detail. Yeah, that's a great point, Andrea. Um, you know, we often talk about like tracking your spending as one way to help, you know, reduce financial stress. And, um, you know, even that, even when you start, if you haven't tracked your spending before uh, and you start tracking it, you know, that can even be the first initial part of that can even be a cause of financial stress sometimes, but there's some helpful tools out there that can help you do that um, and get that under control. So definitely check out those resources. But with this holiday season, especially uh, if you feel the financial stress getting to you, please, you know, um, don't be afraid to seek out help and take time for your own self-care to make sure you're taking care of yourself. And thank you so much for listening today. As always, please like, subscribe, and share this podcast with your family and friends. Take care and we hope that you're enjoying this holiday season.